the best is yet to come. That's all I can describe this franchise from 1 to 4. Not 5 because that work was unfinished. It's a good game but not a good story and a missed opportunity. I never played any of the PSP games like Peace Walker or Portable Ops as well as Metal Gear for the NES. Now the game is slow of course being a stealth game but on the other hand it feels like a tactical espionage action movie with well choreographed cutscenes complemented with voice acting which this game took seriously. The other games I can think of that voice acting is horror games like Resident Evil, Silent Hill but to be honest they don't have good voice acting. I don't even think they even care to do the job properly. But this game is jammed back with information, plot, drama, plot twist and politics surrounding Metal Gear Solid. The mastermind Hideo Kojima always preaches something in his game. For this one it's war, violence and hatred. And me being a kid I can only remember playing Metal Gear Special Mission. That's basically virtual reality missions so I never got to play the main titles until I saved up all my money as a teenager and bought Metal Gear Solid 1 to 4 and played them in that order and I was blown away by the complexity of the story and gameplay. And with that said, enjoy some Metal Gear Solid T. T stands for Tactical Espionage Action if you're unaware. <clears throat> right. Metal Gear Solid is a stealth game that put and refined that particular genre on the map. The other games I can think of that is a good stealth game is Splinter Cell. The game is developed by Konami but Hideo Kojima pretty much did everything, directing, producing and writing. Metal Gear Solid came out in the year 1998 for the PlayStation and follows the story of Metal Gear 2 and 1. You don't need to play those games to understand what is happening because further on to the story the series get fleshed out and explained to his best abilities. Metal Gear Solid was of course well received, shipping more than 6 million copies and 12 million demos of the game. It is easily one of the best and important to the video game medium as a whole, popularising cinematic cutscenes and defining stealth genre and because of that this franchise has novels, comic books, radio drama, whatever that is and a sequel down the road. The game did get remade for the GameCube called Twin Snakes. And that game's hard to find or expensive. The art design of the game is beautiful to look at, made by Yoji Shinkawa. He gave reference to the base of Soul Snake from Hideo Kojima. His body is based off John claude Van Damme and his facial features is based off Christopher Walken. I mean looking at the illustrations you can kinda see I guess. I love his art design. Look at the awesome cover on the case, even if it's just Soul Snake's face on it. Still looks good. And not only that, you see an awesome illustrations of all the Metal Gear Solid characters. There, that's the illustration. Plus, I got a huge poster of Solid Snake, which is too awesome. And the music. Oh my god, the music in this game is out of this world. When things get intense, the pace of the music magnifies and gets your heart pumping. And when cutscenes are played out, it's accompanied with orchestral and choral elements. With best is yet to come. The song is performed by... Uh, I'm not going to try to say her name, here it is on the screen. And Rika Muranaka composed and wrote the lyrics. I think the song is performed in Gaelic language. Of course the musical score is composed by Konami in-house musicians that include Kazuki, Muraoka, Hiroyuki, Togo, Takanari, Ishiyama, Lee Jong, Yun and Maki Kiryoka. Try to say those names three times fast. The main theme of Metal Gear Solid is composed by Tappy and it is mmm so good. The voice acting, like I said, they didn't play around with it. David Hater is the one and only voice for Solid Snake and the rest of the cast did an excellent job of conveying the story to the audience who played the game and I'm sure this elevated their career as a voice actor. Now here's a basic of the gameplay. Snake can run, crawl, climb, interact with environments and shoot, that is it. He does have advanced moves like strangling the enemy, quick changing his weapons or items, luring by knocking on walls, quick peek tactical reload and shoot while running. However the mechanics around this snake is an obstacle to get through. Snake has a radar for you to see. Mostly you look at the radar rather than the screen. You can see the enemy field of vision and camera field of vision. The enemy cone vision turns red when they're investigating the noise and when caught you hear the most intense jump scare sound you'll ever hear. When that happens, snake radar will be in alert mode. Enemies will call for backup so run away and hide from the soldiers until it changes from evasion mode and hold out till it becomes back to normal to see the radar and the soldiers go back to their patrol patterns plus some areas the radar will jam, not orange jam, I don't like orange jam but green jam, you basically become blind, think of it as a battle without a sonar and if you haven't noticed most of the time the camera in this game it shows a top down view rather than behind, sometimes it will change to give a cinematic approach rather than making the game bland and since this is a game with infiltration naturally there are going to be cameras everywhere, the hardest one to manoeuvre around is the camera in the corner, you have very little room to move so of course to put it in the narrowest of all rooms or walkway, you can temporarily disable them by using chaff grenades or looking at the radar for the cone vision 
Legend, Snake has variety in weapons and items. The unique one is being a cardboard box for Snake to hide in. Shit, run Snake, run! And one more thing, this game guilt trips you when you die. Like when you hear dun 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 and then someone cries for Snake. I just feel bad, like it was my fault, even though it isn't. I don't like it how Kojima is playing with my emotions and I remembered when I played it for the first time I legit got scared because I thought I did something bad or did something worse Well the story of Metal Gear Solid is massive Just me talk about individual characters and their story easily gonna make this review or discussion an hour long No joke And with that said I'm gonna give the synopsis of Metal Gear 1 and 2 and then after that I'm gonna talk about the story and walkthrough of Metal Gear Solid the synopsis for Metal Gear is going to be about Outer Haven Revolt. In the year 1995, a small but powerfully armed nation called Outer Haven is suddenly active deep in South Africa. Nato soon learns that they are at work designing a nuclear quid walking battle tank called Metal Gear and they send one of the best agent, Grey Fox, to investigate. However, after Grey Fox is taken hostage, things become desperate and Nato is forced to send in the newest member of Foxhound, an untried agent called Solid Snake. Snake is successful, he rescues Grey Fox and forces the surrender of Outer Haven, but just as he is planning his escape, one man stands in his way. It is the commander of Foxhound itself, Big Boss. He has masterminded a large scale mercenary operation in Outer Haven and controls all of it with Iron Fist. Big Boss has intentionally plotted that Nato would send its inexperienced agent Solid Snake. He did this through spreading misinformation to the West, but he was seriously miscalculated. Solid Snake unraveled all of his carefully laid out plans, leading himself to an inevitable final showdown with his nemesis, Big Boss. After a fierce battle in which Big Boss is defeated, Snake emerges victorious as Outer Haven burns around him. And that's all you need to know about Metal Gear. Now onto Metal Gear 2. The synopsis for Metal Gear 2 is going to be about the Zanzibar riot. In the year 1999, Dr. Kyo Mav, inventor of the oil refining microbe Oilix, was taken hostage in Zanzibar, a heavily armed nation in Central Asia ruled by minority ethnic groups. The group was planning to gain political and military hegemony over a world suffering under a cruel weight of a worldwide energy crisis. Roy Campbell, a commander of Fox Sound, called Solid Snake, now in retirement, back to active duty to infiltrate Zanzibar and to recover Professor. Marv. Solid Snake made it past Zanzibar impressive steel wall and penetrated deep into the interior of a secret base. There he once again destroyed Metal Gear which had been rebuilt after being transported from Outer Haven and defeated Grey Fox, the former member of Foxhound and now the leader of the Zanzibar Mercenary Corps. He was also successful in retrieving the Oilix manufacturing process, finally he becomes face to face with the man who is pulling the strings in Zanzibar, Big Boss. He has survived the battle in Outer Haven and created Zanzibar in order to make a world rife with conflict and war, a world in which soldiers such as himself would always have a place. After defeating Big Boss for the second and final time, Snape gives up on war and retires to the peaceful Alaskan wilderness. And with that you should have some understanding with the story while playing the game, however, like I said you don't need to play the previous game to understand this story. So with that being said, again, here's the story and walkthrough of Metal Gear Solid. When the game starts and you get introduced to the developers and publisher logo, there's a nice 2 second music chime, haven't heard that in a while. I just realised that that music is from Police Not which is another Kojima game. Well, the intro sums up your mission without the twist and turn you'll face when playing the game. Snake arrives to Shadow Moses Island in Alaska's Fox Archipelago that is a nuclear weapon disposal facility via submarine. While making his way there, Snake gets briefed by the Colonel Roy Campbell and the situation is that an island was attacked and captured by the next generation special forces led by the members of Foxhound. They already got their hands on hundreds of nuclear warheads and their demand is that the government to hand over the remains of Big Boss. However, if their demands isn't met, they'll launch a nuke attack on the world. Solid Snake has two objectives while infiltrating the nuclear weapon disposal site by himself. The first objective, rescue two hostage taken by Foxhound. First is the DARPA chief Donald Anderson and the second is the president of arms tech Kenneth Baker. The second objective is to see if the terrorists are capable of launching a nuclear attack. If so, Snake has to eliminate the terrorists and prevent a nuclear launch. The time limit is 24 hours. 
He soon realised that Snake was a former member of Foxhound and that the Colonel was the commander of it, that is if Metal Gear Solid was the first entry to the franchise. You learn of six members of Foxhound via small info from the Colonel, Psycho Mantis that has a powerful psychic abilities, Sniper Wolf, a beautiful and deadly sharpshooter, Decoy Octopus who is a master of disguise, Vulcan Raven who is a giant and a shaman, Revolver Ocelot, specialist in interrogation and formidable gunfighter, and finally the leader of Foxhound, Liquid Snake, the man who strangely had the same codename as Solid Snake. When the briefing is over, Snake arrives at the base via small transportation that he had to ditch and swim closer to avoid detection, while being accompanied by a small snippet of my favourite OST, The Best Is Yet To Come. You see a glimpse of Liquid the leader as he rides the elevator to swat some bothersome flies. Soon Snake has to take the elevator but has to wait for it to come down and hide in the meantime. When on the elevator, Snake takes off his swimming gear as the title appears while Snake is posing for an awesome shot. I like it that the developers put in little details, like you can visibly see Solid Snake breathing in the cold climate. Imagine playing and seeing that for the first time back in those days, must have been breathtaking. Now on the outside of the island, Snake gets a call on the codex and introduced to Naomi Hunter, chief of Foxhound medical staff. She is in charge of gene therapy and works alongside Colonel Campbell to provide aid for Snake. She also made the suit for Snake to prevent hypothermia in a cold climate. The other team member is Mei Ling. She is in charge of communication data processing for this operation. She can save your data and invented the codec as well as the soliton radar. Whenever you save, Mei Ling will give Snake advice through Chinese proverbs as well as quotations from western authors depending on the current situation that Snake's in. And this is a nice quirk to a character. She isn't bland or just being introduced as a mechanic to save a game. She has her own personality and she entices you with quotations from various people and her interpretations of it as well as how it reflects to the current situation. Liquid leaves with the hind D chopper since learning that the government has sent two F-16 jets for the diversion, leaving Snake an easy opportunity to infiltrate the facility. And this part, Snake has many ways to enter. I chose the ground floor air ducts. I'm crawling inside of the air duct. You get introduced to more members via the codex. Master Miller, a former drill instructor, he gives psychological advice as well as tips about very special techniques. He also have knowledge about Alaska flora and fauna since he lived in Alaska for so long, and Nastasha Romanenko. You get introduced to her later on but I thought I might as well get out of the way now. She's a military analyst and can provide information about weapon and nuclear technology, as well as tips about how to use weapons and items. On the call via the codec, Snake learns that the Liquid has already destroyed the jets and sent a warning that if they tried that again, he would launch a strike. Once inside the tank hangar, Snake must find the cargo elevator while exploring. Inside the first floor air duct, you learn that the DARPA chief is being held in the first floor basement prison cell as well as a mysterious person that already killed a few guards. Maybe Snake isn't working alone in this operation? Entering the chief Donald's cell via the air ducts, Snake demands some answers and we get a huge exposition dump learning that the terrorists are capable of launching a nuke using a device called Metal Gear Rex, a new Metal Gear top secret black project. Only the president of Armstead and the DARPA chief knows the password to activate Metal Gear Rex. However, there is a way to deactivate it via the three PAL key cards and engage safety lock. Baker has one who is held up in a second floor basement. Donald also gives Snake a level 1 key card before succumbing to a heart attack. Tragic. Someone then opens the cell doors and holds Snake at gunpoint. Snake notices something wrong as this person isn't one of them. Plus their action is what gave it away being a rookie and all and this person stole this poor guy's clothes as a disguise who happens to be a woman that is held up in the next cell if didn't notice it at first maybe this might help who are you after an intense shootout snake sees a glimpse of another fox on member psychomantis and heads to the basement second floor it's kind of creepy the DARPA chief told Snake to look out for a different look on the walls as soldiers didn't have enough time to paint over it and when you do find it you need to use a C4 to destroy the walls multiple times. Snake then finds Baker being trapped in C4 that's wide to him as if he moves the place will explode. Revolver Ocelot reveals himself to Snake for a fight and when you're done chasing him in circles and the fight is over, Ocelot gets his arm sliced off by an exoskeleton ninja from Foxhound before fleeing and Ocelot follows suit. Baker unfortunately told the terrorists his password and now they can launch an attack whenever they feel like it. He gives his pal card to the female soldier called Merrill, who is a colonel's niece. Then he talks about politics, how the world yearns for war and the Metal Gear is being funded by the Pentagon. He gives Snake a disk drive with high intel as well as level 2 key card before again having a heart attack. Wow, is Snake really that beautiful? So, Snake's mission is to contact Merrill and find Metal Gear Chief Engineer Hal Emmerich. 
I feel sorry for those people who threw their case away and just kept the disc and in order to progress, Meryl Codex codes at the back of the case. That is pretty smart of Kojima. He does like breaking the fourth wall after all. And I'm happy that I didn't get spoiled on how to solve it, unlike some games. So Snake types a code on the Codex and calls Meryl as she explains that this base isn't really a nuclear disposal facility but a place for making Metal Gear. And again another tease for the best is yet to come while Snake advises Meryl to share the hell out of his way. I like how everyone nerds and geeks out when meeting the legend Solid Snake, only for him to quickly shut them down. He doesn't see himself as a hero, only a man with a mission. And my favourite quote from Metal Gear Solid 4 goes something like this. <clears throat> I'm no hero, never was, never will be. I'm just gonna leave it at that with a bad snake impression. No hero, never was. I'm no hero, never was. Or I'm just gonna give up. Soon after, Meryl opened the cargo doors for Snake, but the hall was littered with infrared sensors, calling Nastasha. She tells Snake to use cigarettes as will help him detect the laser and carefully make your way to the other side without setting it off. As if that happens, the door will close and Snake will die from poisonous gas. Before you go outside, make sure to get the mine detector as the place is scattered with claymores. Snake gets a mysterious call from someone called Deep Throat and warns Snake that an ambush is waiting for him and then Snake meets up with Raven riding a tank and won't let Snake pass. So this fight is between Snake and a freaking tank. Throw a few grenades and the battle is over. However, Raven calls Liquid as this is all planned for Snake to get the keycard and progress. Now in the nuclear building, Snake is unable to use weapons as the place is covered with warheads and damaging them will cause them to explode. You can't use guns even if you wanted to, but on the other hand the soldiers can shoot you down, which is stupid. Heading to the second floor basement, the floor is electrified and is filled with gas past certain point. Up in level 1 basement in the office is a Nikita, a guided rocket launcher, and with this Snake shoots down the power source for the electric floors. Now that Snake can walk through it, going further, Snake will hear some horrific sound and see guards covered in blood. And at the end of the hallway, you see a person responsible for this mess, the ninja cyborg. Inside the room, Hal is confronted by the cyborg. However, he wears himself because of the situation that he's in. But mostly, the cyborg is more interested in Snake, so Snake must battle with the ninja to the death, who is itching to feel alive. It's funny how Hal remarks this encounter or scenario of being like a Japanese anime. During the fight, bullets are useless since the ninja can deflect them all with his katana, so only hand-to-hand -hand combat works here and chaff grenades. After the fight, the ninja has a meltdown and gives Snake a hint on who it might be, as Snake thinks he's Grey Fox, and this is confirmed as Naomi gives some backstory on him, as he was tested for experiments and the exoskeleton is keeping him alive. Snake meets with Emmerich to get info on Metal Gear Rex and his arsenal. You learn a little of Emmerich's backstory, nothing important, and he decides to help Snake and tells him that Metal Gear Rex is being held in an underground maintenance base. You get teased with Hal as he might have a heart attack, but doesn't, or shall I say Otakon, his codename, which is a mixture of otaku and convention. Otakon reasons on why he wants to be a common scientist is because he wanted to build a robot like in a Japanese anime. Also, Snake gets a level 4 keycard. Going up to level 1 basement and into the ladies' restroom, Snake finally meets with Meryl without disguise and compliments her butt. Also, if you're quick enough and hide, you can see her getting changed if you're a pervert. Not that I did that before. Snake gets the PAL key to stop Metal Gear Rex and a level 5 keycard from Meryl. Snake follows Meryl since she knows her way around and unfortunately due to her weak mentality she's under control of Psycho Mantis. And one cool thing about this is that going into first person mode you're able to see yourself through the eyes of Psycho Mantis. Now Snake must fight the master of telekinesis and telepathy. This fight has a gimmick, a good gimmick but a gimmick nonetheless and that is that Psycho Mantis can read your mind. How can he read your mind? Simple by reading your data. Like if you have any Konami titles saved into your memory card he can read them out to you like Castlevania or Silent Hill, but if you don't have those save files then he's not going to say anything. And that same goes for Twin Snakes, but in there he reads Nintendo titles. Plus he can vibrate your controllers with psychic powers. Now if you've been playing on PlayStation 3 like I have, it won't work so it got awkward. However it does work on PlayStation 1. He can read your every input and dodge out of the way, so the best thing to do is to change your controller port to second player and he'll be confused on why he can't read your mind. Also he can change your TV screen. With Mantis dead and learning of his story and foreshadowing something, Snake and Meryl talk to each other as Meryl feels stupid for being in control of Mantis and asks Snake if he feels a certain way towards her, referring back to this instant. Snake, how do you like me? What the? Do you like me? Hold me, Snake. What's wrong? Oh, oh hurry, hurry, make love to me. Oh, you 
don't like girls. When all the talk is over, both of them go through a hidden door and into the snowy glacier cave where you hear wolves howling. This area is dark so it's best to use night vision goggles. You'll find this on the second floor basement in one of the rooms using level 4 keycards. So with Mero taking the lead, Snake makes his way through the cave and kills a few wolves but the baby wolves are left unharmed. You can't kill them anyways. Outside of the cave, claymores are scattered everywhere and only Mero knows the way because of Psycho Mantis. Meryl walks in front only for a sniper wolf to shoot and wound her, trying to lure Snake out in the open. When since I do have sniper rifle, it's time for me to backtrack to the tank hangar and find the sniper rifle in the second floor basement and dashing back to the scene of the crime. Meryl is missing but a sniper wolf is still there waiting for a prey so Snake has to have a sniper battle with the best the world has to offer. You have a nice touchy moment between the both of them as Meryl wants Snake to leave her behind but of course that's not gonna happen. After a grueling battle where Snake was shaking his rifle left and right because of anxiety you can pop some pills to keep him calm but do you really need to sway your weapons left and right frantically? I mean I know thing or two about anxiety but the least you can do is hold your rifle steady you're already lying down anyways Meryl is gone and snake is captured and tortured liquid and ocelot talk about stirring up trouble between the power nation america china and russia anyways this part is intense as if you die you lose all your progress and start from the beginning or so they say and on the other hand you have to mash the circle button to stay alive the longer snake is tortured the quicker his health depletes so your thumb is gonna hurt like crazy while you're making stupid faces I also like how Ocelot teaches me how to play the torture game. <sighs> oh shit. Also, when Liquid and Ocelot were talking before, Snake learns that him and Liquid are sons of Big Boss, making them brothers, and Decoy Octopus is already dead, probably killed by Grey Fox. And something about Liz in Fawn 3 Blade, or how I typed it in, less infinite terrible. Snake is then tossed in a cell with the Darby Chief, who's already dead and is drained of blood. This is all since he only died a few hours ago, and Snake has been watched by a guard Meryl stole clothes from. It's weird how that guy becomes relevant later on. Snake learns through the Colonel that America won't negotiate with terrorists and aren't gonna give in, so Liquid's gonna launch a nuclear strike in 10 hours. While being tortured numerous times, Naomi heals Snake by vibrating controller and asking me to place it on my arm. It didn't work. And then Snake and Yomi talk about their past, with Snake killing his father, Big Boss, and his relationship with Frank Yeager, who is Grey Fox, and Yomi not remembering her parents, nationality, or her identity. She did have an older brother, but he died, unfortunately. When Snake is finished with his call, the guard runs toward the toilet because of his stomach ache. Otacon meets Snake just to give him food because he thought he might be hungry. That's adorable. He also gives Snake a level 6 keycard and Sniper Wolf's handkerchief. Seems like Otacon has taken a fancy to Sniper Wolf and hopes that Snake doesn't kill her. Luckily, Otacon gives us a ketchup bottle so that Snake can fake his own death. But me being an idiot, I got caught so it didn't work. And I had to wait till someone opened the door, which was the Cyborg Ninja Grey Fox. Snake gets his equipment back, but check his inventory as Ocelot sneakily placed a bomb inside, now heading back all the way to the freaking tower. Since Snake got a Sniper Wolf handkerchief, you can go through the cave without antagonizing the wolves and they're taking a liking to Snake because of the tissue chief. Inside the tower is the most tedious part of the game. All you have to do is run up the countless stairs to reach the roof while the soldiers are on full alert and on your tail. You think it'll never end on your first playthrough. Plus the level 6 door is frozen shut from the outside and that's the reason why Snake has to go up to the roof. And on the roof, Snake encounters Liquid in a high D chopper as he destroys the antenna and the walkway to the other towers. So Snake somehow has to survive the onslaught of Liquid attack. Luckily I had the rope on me, I didn't know how I got it though. Okay, you find the rope literally before climbing the stairs. Snake used the rope to repel down the side and avoid machine gun fire and steam emitting from the pipes. I used C4 to break free of the ice to the door I was supposed to go through and the walk with the other tower you get bombarded with bullets. Like my god, I tried dodging them all but it's impossible. I wasted like 2 or 3 rations on them. Inside the tower, Snake finds a stinger rocket launcher as well as some rockets. I inspect the elevator only for Snake to be puzzled. Then I head down the stairs only for the pass to be destroyed. So I go back to the lift and meet Otacon to talk about if love can bloom on the battlefield. Like with Snake and Meryl or Otacon and Sniper Wolf. Snake heads up on the roof for a showdown with Liquid while Otacon repairs the elevator. And that means walking up some stairs again. Now the pass to go up to the roof on Tower B was blocked before. So like an idiot I tried to go up to the roof on Tower A only for that to be blocked. So I was puzzled. Then I went back only to see the box magically move to the side. So again more pitter patter along the stairs and using chaff grenade to temporarily shut down the sentry guns and after a grueling peekaboo contest with Liquid, finally Snake completes his mission, killing Liquid in his helicopter, all while being confused why Liquid is calling Snake his brother. Also Snake delivers one of my favourite one liners. See you in hell, Liquid. 
That takes care of the cremation. Going back to the elevator, Otacon talked to Snake via the codec about how there were 5 stealth camouflage suits, leaving 4 as Otacon has one, but he went back to get one for Snake and they all disappeared. Well I know where this is going, Snake is ambushed by stealth soldiers and kills them all. Then we head out on the snowfield, you hear wolves howling and that means one bad thing, sniper wolf. Snake calls Otacon to make sure if there are any more stealth suits, then Otacon pleases with Snake not to kill her, but this is war, people will die. Sniper wolf intervenes the call saying wolves never leave their prey and how women make better soldiers than men and hunt snake down like a dog. This fight is difficult, any sniper fight MGS is difficult, not as long as the end but again difficult. You can barely see what's in front of you and if you're out in the open sniper wolf will constantly shoot you down. Not only that snake will have the shakes again so in this fight you have to be very quick to take her down and keep an eye on her as she'll constantly move cover to cover. Sometimes she'll deceive you thinking she's gone forward or you've heard to go back to the same previous hiding spot. Unfortunately this fight is over. I said unfortunately because well this is war, people need to die in order for the world to progress and seeing how Otacon crying for sniper wolf is heartbreaking plus you learn more about her sad past as she is born in a battlefield and everyone she knew was dead, her family, friends, so Big Boss saved her from it as she became a sniper trying to take revenge on the world who turned a blind eye to her suffering and her country suffering. You know when I play and hear her backstory it kinda hurts me because I know what she's talking about. I mean yeah of course I haven't experienced war, duh. When I turn on the news and from my point of view I've seen people from the Middle East crying and begging for all this to stop who look like me by the way and some of them will hold a grudge and retaliate and that's why I kind of understand Sniper Wolf's story and struggle because it's very reflective on reality and it already happened. <sighs> God MGS story is so good. Snake pulls out his pistol to set her free. Not before that Otacon brings her her sniper rifle, her other half. Now she has everyone around her. This isn't the last of Otacon Misery and I'm guessing if whoever played it to this point it probably made him an MGS fan, I know I was. The story with her is superb and I kinda miss her, I didn't want her to die and after that disc 2 is needed. I remember I turned off my playstation console and inserted the disc that way since I didn't know how to do it and well I had to fight Snapper Wolf all over again. Well I guess that's how my stupid brain worked at that time. Snake is inside the blast furnace and has to shimmy across and above the lava to get to the cargo elevator. There he gets ambushed by soldiers till reaching his destination. Then out of nowhere Master Miller calls and tells Snake about Naomi and how her story she told Snake about her past was a lie and she might be working for the terrorists since she's a member of Foxhound. You see a flock of raven flying around and when you get inside the warehouse there you see Vulcan Raven with the minigun from the F-16 jets. Jeez that's overkill isn't it? When the fight happens, he has a wider field of vision so it's best to use a Nikita rocket till he drops dead and when that happens Vulcan gives Snake a level 7 key card and gives more information on the DARPA chief who died from the heart attack but plot twist it wasn't the DARPA chief but was Decoy Octopus and the real DARPA chief was with you in the cell as Decoy needed the blood of his victim to copy everything about them however death will not escape them so he took the fall for it. It must be sad that he is a member of Fox Sound that you don't get to see physically like you don't know what his real face looks like or the than him being the DARPA chief and the only way that you get to see his real face is in the illustrations in the manual when they give a synopsis on Foxon members. You're already at halfway point or beyond that when you learn of this information so to me he just feels like a leftover character with no purpose other than to die in someone else's place. Then the raven devour Vulcan Raven as he wishes to return to mother nature. Miller calls snakes again to tell him that Naomi name is a fake and she's taken someone else's identity then asks for her arrest however Colonel Campbell is hesitant as they can't complete the mission without her and of course the Colonel still keeping secrets from Snake but finally we get to see Metal Gear Rex and Otacon talk to Snake about more politics and that the missile can be fired from the railgun so it doesn't need fuel and becomes a stealth weapon inside the control room Ocelot is talking to Liquid well it was going to be true damn it he's still alive and their plan is to make the powerhouses country to fight each other and sell Metal Gear Rex to the highest bidder or give it to Russia I don't know too many talking. 
We also learned of the mysterious circumstances of why people dying from heart attack was caused by Fox die and something about Big Boss's dream the Outer Haven. So Snake has one of the PAL cards that is made out of a memory shaped alloy that changes shapes with the temperature so you don't need 3 key cards. The card itself is 3. Ocelot being a good spot shoots the card out of Snake's hand and into the drainage ditch. It's beneath Metal Gear Rex in the water to the right side so go back to the control room and enter the first PAL code. The second PAL code you need to find a cold temperature room. Go into the warehouse where you fought Vulcan Raven. Stay there for a few seconds while having a card out and then head back. The third PAL code head all the way back to the furnace room to heat the card and then head back. Snake learns that Fox die is an assassination weapon virus that simulates a heart attack and Naomi did inject Snake with nanomachines since she's in charge of gene therapy, so Snake might be infected with it. Naomi is already under arrest by the colonel for suspicions with working with a terrorist and is being interrogated. Naomi calls Snake privately to tell him the truth about herself and learns that Grey Fox is her older brother, whom Snake killed by the way, or partially crippled. And it is confirmed that Snake was injected with Fox Tie as part of the operation to test it out, so Snake doesn't have much longer to live, and the colonel did know about this which was a shame. Going back to the control room, inputting all the codes, the Metal Gear Rex should deactivate, right? Well, wrong. This was part of Liquid's plan all along, and Master Miller was Liquid himself, as real one was dead for a few days. That meant we've been had. Which is the best plot twist in this game, or this franchise for that matter. The control room doors are locked and it's filled with gas, as Otacon tries to hack the system to open the door, and a random shirtless Liquid runs toward Metal Gear Rex, and informs Snake that his real mission was to kill the Fox Hound members and the Pentagon would retrieve Metal Gear Rex and the dead genome soldiers. Liquid and Snake are twin brothers from Big Boss's genes, so in a sense they're clones. Snake got the dominant genes while Liquid got the recessive genes which made Liquid very jealous of him and claimed that Snake stole his birthright. And with all that emotional family reunion out of the way, Liquid enters Metal Gear Rex and battles Snake. Well this is fair. Grey Fox entered the battle to help Snake and learns that Deep Throat was him all along, plus he was responsible for killing Naomi's parents and unfortunately died in a battle. Snake destroys Metal Gear Rex. Liquid drags Snake's unconscious body on top of Metal Gear along with Meryl. More exposition as Liz in Font Terrible or less infinite terrible was a project extracting Big Boss DNA to make 8 super babies but only 2 survive. Snake and Liquid. The Pentagon knows that Metal Gear is destroyed so they're gonna nuke Shadow Moses to cover up the evidence and story. The Colonel tries to buy some time for Snake, however gets arrested for high treason by the Secretary of Defense. Now the final battle between two brothers begins on top of Metal Gear Rex with a time limit of 3 minutes. And this fight is intense, you basically have no room for error or any room to run away as you can fall off Metal Gear Rex and die to your death. Well you can mash buttons to climb up, but you get the point. Snake wins as Liquid falls off to his death. Meryl and Snake reunite although we do be like. Otacon stays behind to help Snake with his escape route to the parking lot with Meryl. Both of them ride the jeep and kill the remaining soldiers and guess who shows up one last time for the last time. Liquid and after trying to outrun Liquid they both crash each other out of the tunnel as Liquid is left standing only to be killed by Fox Die. And Shadow Moses won't be nuked as the Secretary of Defense was acting alone from the President and the President issued his arrest. Naomi learns of her brother's fate and doesn't give much information on how much time Snake has to live. So instead, she just tells Snake to live his life. Cool. Snake, or his real name David, and Meryl fall in love with each other and ride off to the cold Alaskan sunset. Oh, that's how it's supposed to be. At the end, you get some real life info on nuke warheads and the credit is accompanied with the best is yet to come. I really do love this music. But when you think it's over, you hear Ocelot talk to someone about the real mission and that person is the President of the United States, the third one, Solidus. And that's my review of Metal Gear Solid for the PlayStation. Honestly, this game is a masterpiece. Only a few handful of games are such worthy of the praise and this game deserves it. The story is complex and intriguing with lots of information of the world and lore of Metal Gear Solid or Metal Gear and for such a small game this game took me 8 hours to complete and trust me that's not a bad thing this game had so much inside. The cutscene are immaculate and has good cinematography it's almost like you're watching a movie and forget that you're even playing the game. The voice acting is excellent and soothing and the soundtrack of this game is just timeless. 
you can put it on repeat over and over again. There is a rehabilitation mode in this game if you're bored, that's basically in short training mode to enhance your own skills. Now there are 10 stages in total and it gets harder the more you progress. Then you have time trial and gun shooting. The music is different from the main game but it's also excellent. Yeah. So yeah, the best is yet to come for my review of further Metal Gear Solid games that I'll talk about in the future. And with that said, I've been Animus USP. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to comment, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you. Well, you'll see me in the next video. Bye bye. Snake, what happened? Snake. Well, let's see how long I can spin this. All right. One, two, three, four, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. It's impossible. Bye.